Okay, welcome everyone. This is Scott here again with a new video to help you learn how to trade, invest, and master your finances so you can apply that knowledge in the real world and multiply your money. And in today's video here, I'll be discussing option assignment for credit spreads and iron condors. The reason being is I've seen a lot of questions about this particular subject in YouTube comments of other videos, for example, and I would say the most popular question I've seen is what happens if by the expiration date the stock ends up in between my strikes? either for a put credit spread or a call credit spread or an iron condor, which is obviously the combination of those two strategies. So I'll definitely be answering that particular question in this video and also walking you through all of the other scenarios that could play out as well. And so very quickly before I get started here, for those of you who are new to the channel, I just want to let you know that I do also teach on Skillshare, where you can take my very in-depth classes on options trading and stock market investing. And I provided some links to some of the introductory courses of mine in the description of this video below. So be sure to check those out. And when you sign up for Skillshare using any of those links, you'll get a two week free trial. And so for the various examples I'll be walking you through here, I've chosen Twitter stock, no particular reason, but let's do come over to the trade tab now and take a look at the option chain on Twitter stock here. And let's go into the May expiration cycle. And as usual on the left hand side, these are all the call options on the right hand side. These are all the puts and then down the middle here, these are all the strike prices. So starting things off first with a call credit spread which is simply a strategy where you sell an out of the money call option and then you also buy a further out of the money call option. So for example, if I were to sell a call credit spread on Twitter stock here for the option I'm selling, I would probably go a bit closer, maybe to the 80 strike call option here and then perhaps purchase the 85 strike call. So let me go ahead and set up that order here. So I'll go to sell and then go to vertical and that brings up the order down here. And so as you can see, we're going to sell one contract 80 strike call option and then also buy one contract 85 strike call option and for selling the spread here I would take in about 90 bucks in credit which is actually a lot lower than I would want for a five dollar wide spread here but just for the sake of this example the credit really does not matter here and so there are three main scenarios that could play out with this kind of strategy assuming I were to hold this position all the way through the expiration date on May 21st the first and easier scenario to understand is what happens if by May 21st, Twitter stock is simply below both of my call strikes here. This is a bearish strategy, so ideally I want Twitter to stay below both my strikes. And if that does happen, then great, because that means both of these options here will just expire worthless, they'll disappear, and I will keep the full credit I sold the spread for initially. Now the second scenario, which gets a bit more complicated, is what happens if by the expiration date, I am totally wrong on Twitter, I put the spread on because I am bearish, but Twitter just has a monster rally and goes from 71 bucks per share where it is right now. And let's say by May 21st, it goes all the way to 90 bucks per share. So like I said, it blows through both of my call strikes. Now for the 80 strike call option, the one that I sold initially, because this option will be well in the money, that means I will very likely get assigned on this contract, meaning I'll have to sell 100 shares of Twitter at a price of 80 bucks per share. Now I actually don't have 100 shares of Twitter in my portfolio, but good thing I also bought this 85 strike call option, right? Because this will allow me to purchase 100 shares and then I can sell them at a price of only 80. So I definitely would lose money in this scenario here, but TD Ameritrade, my broker, would handle all the buying and selling of shares for me behind the scenes. Now if you do not use TD Ameritrade, if you have a different broker, I would still check with them to see what their policy is on automatically exercising in the money options. Because I do know for TD Ameritrade here, for any options that you have purchased that end up in the money by the expiration date, TD Ameritrade will automatically exercise this option here. And so like I said, if I do get assigned on my 80 strike call that I sold, then I don't have to worry about anything. TD Ameritrade will automatically buy those 100 shares for me at a price of 85 bucks per share. And then it will honor the contract that I've sold by immediately turning around and selling those 100 shares at a price of 80 which means when I come back into my platform in the next trading day after expiration, I would simply notice that these options, this position is no longer in my portfolio and my account balance would be less by the amount of money I lost on this position and that's it. And so now the third scenario that could play out is what happens if by May 21st, Twitter stock ends up in between my strikes here. So let's say it goes from 71 bucks per share all the way to 82 bucks per share. And so in that case, my 85 strike call option, the one that I bought would expire worthless. It would just disappear. And so if I do get assigned on my 80 strike call option, 
because this one would still be in the money. Well, this means I have to sell 100 shares of Twitter stock at a price of 80 bucks per share. And so what's gonna happen here by the next trading day is TD Ameritrade is going to enter me into a short position, a short stock position for those 100 shares on Twitter. So standard option expirations are usually on Fridays. So that means come the following Monday, when I go into my platform here, I would see I am now short 100 shares of stock. Now, if this is what I wanted, then no big deal. It would actually be convenient that TD Ameritrade did this for me. But this situation can get a bit tricky if that's not what you wanted to have happen, especially if you do not have the amount of capital necessary to actually short those 100 shares. And if that's the case, if you do not have enough capital to do that, then you will get a margin call from your broker saying that you need to deposit more capital in your account in the next 24 or 48 hours, whatever their policy is. Otherwise, they're going to automatically close that position for you and probably not at a good price for you. So what that all means for this particular situation is if you come into your platform on Monday and you see you are short 100 shares of stock, that means to close out of that position manually, you'll have to just buy those 100 shares back. And that's what your broker would do automatically if you did not have enough capital in your account. And also you did not deposit enough capital to cover that position within the time frame they have given you. So like I said, this can get a bit tricky if you actually do find yourself dealing with shares of stock. And now there actually is a fourth scenario that could play out, although very unlikely, that I should mention as well. And that's the case where Twitter stock blows through both of my strikes, but my short 80 strike call option does not get assigned. And that can happen, although it is very rare. So if I were to not get assigned on my 80 strike call option, that would just leave me with my 85 strike long call. In which case my broker here would automatically exercise this long call option because it's in the money. So now come Monday, the following trading day, I would see that I'm actually long 100 shares of Twitter stock. And the same kind of things would play out with this particular situation as if I was short 100 shares. If I come into my platform and I see I'm long 100 shares of Twitter stock, then if I don't want those shares, I can just close that position manually and sell them and be done with it. Or if I did not have enough capital in my account to actually buy those 100 shares, then once again, I'll get a notice from my broker saying I need to deposit more money into my account. Otherwise, they're going to automatically close this position for me very soon. So in that case, they would automatically just sell those 100 shares. And once again, probably not at a very great price for me. And so that covers option assignment and expiration for the call credit spread here. And obviously there is a lot of complexity and intricacy that goes into this. And so that's why I always recommend that you simply close out these positions before the expiration date. And you can do that either on the day of expiration on May 21st before the market closes or any time prior to that. And if you do this, if you just close out the spread before the expiration, then you will never have to deal with any of these situations. But of course, I wanted to make this video anyway, so you at least have an understanding of how this actually works and also hopefully to give you some motivation for closing your spreads early so that you don't actually have to deal with any of this stuff. Now, what about a put credit spread? It's going to be very similar, but I still wanna walk you through it here. So now let's say I'm bullish on Twitter and that's why I wanna use this strategy. And in this case, I want to sell maybe the 65 strike put option and then buy the 60 strike put option. So once again, let me set up this order here. I'm gonna go to sell and then vertical. And as you can see down here, sell one contract, 65 strike put option, and then also buy one contract, 60 strike put option. And the credit for this spread is going to be 130 bucks. So definitely a bit higher than the call credit spread. And that's probably because there is volatility skewed to the upside in Twitter stock at the moment. And in case you don't know what that is, and if you wanna learn more about it, I do have a separate YouTube video explaining that, and I'll post a card above linking to it so you can watch it later. So the first easy scenario is what happens if by May 21st, Twitter stock is above both of my put strikes here. And that is the ideal scenario, of course. In that case, both these options expire worthless, they disappear, and I just get to walk away and keep the full 130 bucks in credit. But now what happens if Twitter blows through both of my put strikes? It has a massive sell-off, and let's say by May 21st, it falls from 71 bucks per share down to maybe 55 bucks per share. Well, in that case, I would very likely get assigned on my 65 strike put option, the one that I sold, and of course that may not happen, and I'll get to that in a minute, but chances are I will get assigned on this put option, which means I'll have to purchase 100 shares of Twitter at a price of 65 bucks per share. And because my 60 strike put option, the one that I bought is also in the money in this scenario, 
That means my broker, TD Ameritrade, will automatically exercise this option for me, and therefore it will handle all the buying and selling of shares on my behalf behind the scenes. It will purchase 100 shares at a price of 65 bucks per share, and then immediately turn around and sell those 100 shares at a price of 60 bucks per share. So of course I would lose money in that transaction, and that's just what happens with put credit spreads when you are directionally incorrect. So come Monday, the following trading day, I would just see that I'm no longer in this position here. Both of these put options will be gone and my account balance would be less by the amount of money I lost on this position. And that's it. And so now with the more tricky situations, the first of which is what happens if Twitter ends up in between my strikes by May 21st. So let's say it falls from 71 down to 63 bucks per share. Well, in that case, the option I bought, the 60 strike put option would still be out of the money. It would expire worthless and just disappear, which just leaves the 65 strike put option remaining. And because this option would be in the money, I would very likely get assigned on it. So I would have to purchase 100 shares of Twitter at a price of 65 bucks per share. So now very similar to the call credit spread scenarios, come the next trading day, I would see I am long 100 shares of Twitter in my account. And if that's what I wanted, then fine, so be it. But if I did not have enough capital in my account to actually afford those 100 shares, then I'll get a margin call from my broker and I'll have to either deposit more money into my account to cover the expense of buying those shares, or I can just close the position myself, or I can do nothing and just have my broker do it for me once the time frame they've given me expires. But as always, I would definitely recommend to close that position yourself at your own price. So if you come into your platform and you see you're long 100 shares and you don't want them, then just sell them. Just create a sell order for those 100 shares and sell them back into the market at a good price for you. And also I should mention, depending on your broker, if you were to do nothing and you let your broker sell those 100 shares for you, they may also charge you a fee for doing that as well. So another reason to just do it yourself manually. And so finally, this leaves that fourth edge case scenario that may not happen very often. And actually, I would say that definitely won't happen very often. But of course, it is possible that Twitter blows through my put strikes here, but I do not get assigned on my 65 strike put option. And so in that case, that just leaves my 60 strike put option that I purchased and my broker would automatically exercise this option here. So because I'm the buyer of this put option, then come the next trading day, I will see that I am now short 100 shares of Twitter stock. And that's assuming I did not already have 100 shares in my portfolio to sell in the first place. If I did already have those shares in my account ahead of time, then no big deal. My broker would just automatically sell those shares and be done with it. But if not, then I would just be in a short stock position come Monday. So that means if I wanted to close that position, if I did not want that short stock position, then I'll just buy those shares back at the market price, which would be much lower than my strike here anyway. But still, once again, a whole lot more complexity and intricacy that goes into assignment and expiration with these spread strategies. So that's why, again, I recommend you just close out these spreads before the expiration date, and you will not have to deal with any of this. But I still think it's very important to understand how this actually works. Because if, for example, you just forget to close out a spread before the expiration date, then at least you will know what to expect and then what to do come the next trading day. And finally here, I know I also mentioned iron condors in this video, and that is a strategy that is simply the combination of a put credit spread and a call credit spread at the same time. So there's no need to go into the scenarios of assignment and expiration for the iron condor in this video because it's the exact same thing for the put credit spread and the call credit spread. It just depends on where the stock actually ends up by the expiration. If it blows through your calls, then you'll be dealing with the situations that will play out for the call credit spread. And then conversely, if the stock plummets and goes through your put strikes, then you'll just be dealing with the situations that could play out for the put credit spread. So with that being said, that concludes this video. I know the information here can definitely be a bit confusing, so perhaps rewatch this video a couple times or definitely ask me questions in the comment section below, and I'll be happy to answer them. And don't forget, if you want to take some very in-depth classes on options trading and stock market investing, then check out my Skillshare courses, links in the description of this video. And finally, if you enjoyed this video, then please smash that like button and subscribe to my channel. I push out new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and you don't want to miss out. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.